Let's go with the next one. Gastroenteritis. Uh, it's a condition that causes diarrhea and vomiting uh, because of infection. All right. A condition which causes diarrhea and vomiting. So presenting complaint could be diarrhea, could be vomiting, could be abdominal pain. Right. So uh, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, fever, abdominal pain. Anytime, as I said, if you have a case where patient is having vomiting, patient has got diarrhea, you need to rule out a dehydration. Right. You have have to prove I am the safest doctor working here. If somehow you can prove that, you will pass the station. All right. So red flag, this will be dehydration. Rule that out. Dry mouth, thirsty, urine output. Yeah. Patient has got diarrhea. So we maybe like a couple of questions for thyroid. And if the patient is elderly, I will be looking for cancer as well. Loss of weight, loss of appetite, tiredness, dizziness, shortness of breath. So all those questions you need to ask. So data gathering, presenting complaint, associated symptoms, red flag, uh, and differential, that is what you need to do. Now, uh, the thing is, patient will give you very clear history. Whenever we are dealing with gastroenteritis, patient uh, might be giving you the history that I have eaten outside in that restaurant. So, so that may be the reason of gastroenteritis, isn't it? Because, you know, all the restaurants in this country, they have got that hygiene rating as well. Isn't it? So it's, it's really important point, actually, uh, because if patient has eaten somewhere and that's the reason he got this uh, gastroenteritis. So we need to be very careful because uh, we have to notify it to Public Health England as well, to HPT. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll come to it. So uh, risk factors going to be uh, in past medical history and lifestyle. You ask for smoking, you ask for alcohol, you ask for diet, you ask for uh, family history. And you can also ask like, okay, so is it only you who's having this symptom? Or if you went out with somebody else, they might also have the same symptoms. So that could be really, really important here for you. All right. And obviously ask for uh, psychosocial history as well. Then uh, uh, general physical examination, vital is really important because patient is having vomiting, patient is having diarrhea. Make sure uh, patient is not dehydrated. So vital is very important. Chest examination, abdominal examination, full blood count, liver function, kidney function test. Uh, why I mentioned thyroid? Because thyroid function test, because if you are thinking about hyperthyroid, maybe you can mention that. Uh, inflammatory markers and you can check the stool as well. And if there is any bug, we can treat the patient accordingly. All right. Gastroenteritis. As I said, you know, whenever we have got this kind of infection in this country, we do not give any medication to stop diarrhea because what this, you have got infection in your tummy. So what do you have to do? Let this infection go out. So let this diarrhea continue, right? So treatment is symptomatic. If patient has got uh, some symptoms, you will treat. And if patient can't take orally, then uh, you may have to go for IV fluids as well, right? So this is really important because see, Treat common things first. Patient is dehydrated, so hydrate this patient. That is really important, right? So hydration, ORS, that's what you have to do. So I was saying like you may not be giving the medication to stop diarrhea, right? So uh, like loperamide, but uh, yeah, uh, it's it's uh, no, definitely not for children, but in adults sometimes we give it, right? We tell the patient not to go to the school or uh, at workplace at least for two, three days. Yeah, maintain hygiene. That is really, really important. Yeah. And gastroenteritis, uh, food poisoning, hepatitis A, tuberculosis, uh, mumps, measles, malaria, dengue, meningitis, encephalitis. You have to notify these problems to the relevant authorities. So what they can do is actually they can... Uh, uh, check it further. They can uh, find out if maybe others are also getting infected or not, right? So this is something that you need to mention. And then, okay, the follow-up and warning signs. Follow-up and warning sign is a must that you are definitely not going to miss, all right? So the symptoms are getting worse. Sometimes you, you don't know what should I say in the warning signs? What should I say in the follow-up? I don't know when the patient should be coming again. You don't need to know that. Just say, please always come for the follow-up. If your condition gets worse, come back to the hospital or let us know. That's it. You just need to touch those points and you will see you will get better scope, right? So patients concerned, my, why did I get this? So you can, I think, answer that. 
when can I go to work? So tell the patient, maybe take two, three days off. And uh, why do I have to inform authorities? Sometimes, you know, for example, what can happen is uh, your patient might say, it's my, it's my restaurant, it's my friend restaurant. And I don't want to tell you which restaurant I have eaten. But when you justify, when you tell them, like, what's the reason behind it? Why are you asking it? So, so it is, it's for the public interest. I mean, you got the infection from there. So maybe others, if they go out and eat in that restaurant, they may also get the infection. So to prevent the public, to prevent uh, the infection spread, that is what we have to do, right? So this is something that we need to do in this kind of station, right? IPS, just be careful. Uh, involve your patient, acknowledge, acknowledge, and acknowledge. Be a good listener. In this country, they love talking. Make sure you have got good ears. All right. Mm -hmm.